those people are the partakers. And Christ gave. And the people took. They received. They knew that he came from heaven. And then they came to him. And they received of the abundance of heaven. And the same thing happens today. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. The same abundance he distributed and gave at that time. That same abundance, that same eternal life, that same salvation, that same healing, that same deliverance, that same wonder, that same miracle, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He gives everybody today. You will receive. You will receive. Once again tonight, the present partakers of heaven sent abundance. We're looking at Matthew chapter 13, verse 12. Matthew chapter 13, verse 12. For whosoever has to him shall be given. And he shall have more abundance. But whosoever has not, from him shall be taken away even that he has. Whosoever has. We have life, natural life, and then he'll give you more than natural life. He'll give you spiritual life. Whosoever has, you have the mind to understand. And because you have the mind that understands, he'll give you more and give you miracle that you cannot understand. Whosoever has, you have desire. You are, you are panting for, this, for, your, for your miracle. And because you have desire, whosoever has shall be given more. You have demonstration of his power. You, you see, you have to have a desire before you have the demonstration. Whosoever has ear to hear, to him shall be given what ear has never heard. You are there and you're hearing. And you diligently hearken to the word of God. And you say, I have ears to hear. And because you hear is wonder. The wonders you have never known will come to you. You see, the present partakers are the people that use what they have to get what they don't have. I have ears to hear. I have mind to understand. I have the passion to pursue. And because I have the natural, I attract the supernatural into my life. For whosoever has, to him shall be given and it shall have more abundance. Those are the partakers of the heaven saint abundance. And that's why you have come. 
and you are all ears you want to hear and you have desires deep desires you want to have demonstration of his power you have got something from him and on the basis of that you'll have more I will have I will have more I will have more abundance the present partakers of heaven sent abundance there are three things we're looking at as usual and as you pay attention you have ears to hear so you will possess what ears have never heard you have passion and pursuit so you will have the power and the provision you have the desire to get something to possess something and so you will have the demonstration of his performance three things we're looking at number one committed ears and hearts responding to the heaven saint address your ears are committed your hearts are committed to responding to the address to the admonition to the message to the saying of christ unto you heaven saint address heaven saint exhortation heaven saint declaration that the Lord brings your way and because you hear and you believe with your heart that message will bear miracle fruit in your life number two closed eyes and hearts rejecting heavenly assistance heavenly assistance the one who cannot see when heavenly assistance comes the eyes will be opened the one who is all swollen up swollen in the tummy swollen in the legs Swollen in the armpit. Swollen because of disease. He needs assistance. And when that heavenly assistant comes, all the swelling will vanish away. All diseases will vanish away. All powerlessness will vanish away. But there are people that close their eyes. There are people that close their hearts. And so they, they reject the assistance of heaven. But when you open your eyes, when you open your heart, heavenly assistance will come your way. Number three, converted hearts and minds receiving heaven's abundance when you present your heart to him when you present your soul to him when you present your character to him when you when you present your personality to him and you admit and you accept i need a change i need a transformation and I want the heavenly blessing for my heart, my soul, and my personality. 
that it brings to your heart, to your soul, to your mind, to your body, to your life, it brings heaven's abundance. Converted hearts and minds receiving heaven's abundance. Look at number one there. Number one is committed ears and committed hearts responding to the heaven sent address. You see what Christ said? He said to his disciples. That's why those disciples were partakers of the miracle power of the Lord. They knew that Christ came from heaven. They knew that Christ is greater than all on earth. They knew every word he spoke, he spoke from heaven. They knew the heavenly quality and character of Christ. And they accepted every word. They accepted every every edification, a defined exhortation. They accepted this word is from heaven. And because of that, that address that came from heaven pulled down miracles from heaven, power from heaven, salvation from heaven. Life eternal from heaven. Because the belief the word he spoke came from heaven. In John chapter 17 verse 8. John 17 verse 8. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. Before Christ came to the earth, God the Father gave him the word to deliver here on earth. And faithfully, he delivered the message from God. And the word of God from heaven has the power to create and recreate. The word Christ brought from heaven has the power to convert and to renew. The word Christ brought from heaven has the power to forgive and to set free. The word Christ brought from heaven has the power to transform life and to renew your life. And those people that came to Christ, the word he brought from heaven, they received, they believed, they embraced. And because of that, that word from heaven made a change in their lives. And Jesus said, for I have given unto them the words that thou givest me. And he says, and they have received them. The word of salvation, they have received them. The word of invitation come to Christ, they have received. The word that Jesus promised, they have received. Word of eternal life. Word of abundant life. Word of healing. Word of deliverance. Word of transformation. That the Father gave to His Son. They paid attention. They were not absent-minded. They were not thinking of another thing. They didn't turn their ears away from the world. He said they have 
receive them. And they have known surely. They have known surely that I came out from thee. They knew that. When you know that, that Christ came from heaven, when you know that, that Christ came with abundant life, when you know that, when you know that Christ came with salvation, when you know that, that Christ came so that you become a partaker of life eternal. That life eternal will come to you. I said that life eternal will come to you. And they have believed that thou did send me. Those are the partakers of the abundant life he brought from heaven. Of the eternal life he brought from heaven. Of the healing he brought from heaven. Of the miracles and the wonders he brought from heaven. When you know that the word Christ spoke, he got from the Father, and every word from the Father will have the performance of it. Hey, look at First Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm reading there from verse 13. In First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, he said, For this cause also, Thank we God. For this cause also, thank we God without ceasing. Because when ye heard, because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not. As the word of men. These people in Thessalonica, when they heard the word of God, they received it not like the words of men. Ah, that's all that's Paul talking. Ah, that's Timothy talking there. Oh, that's Silas talking there. That's Titus talking there. No, no. They received it not as the words of men. When Paul said, hear the word, you'll be saved. They didn't say, that's Paul. They said, that's God talking to us through Paul. And when it says, come, and it will perform miracle in your life. Oh, they didn't say that that man from Nigeria talking. They said, no, God is talking to me through that man. When ye heard us, ye received it not at the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which walketh Walketh also in you that believe. If God came to you now and he said, Pay attention, I'm talking to you. Your eyes are blind, in it. and you know it's God talking to you directly. Immediately after the message, after we pray, your eyes will be opened. And God comes to you directly. And he makes his introduction. And he says, I am God Almighty. I came tonight to raise you up from your bed of affliction. 
you will know beyond any shadow of doubt that tonight you will rise up from your wheelchair. If Christ came in front of you there now and he said, look at my hand and the piercing of the nail in my hand. If Christ came to you right there now and he said, pay attention, look here. Look at my side and look at the hole with the piercing of the spear. I came to set you free tonight. When you see him and he tells you, I am talking to you. And you believe that here is Christ, my healer. You'll be healed immediately. But it's the same thing. That when you hear the word, you don't look at that as the word of a man, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Tonight, the Lord is talking to you. He says, I will forgive you. No doubt, he will forgive you tonight. He says, I will set free. No doubt, he will set you free tonight. He says, I will The Son of God came from heaven to bring to you life, eternal life, abundant life, a life that is set free. He came to break every yoke in your life. Congratulations, tonight you have your miracle. Congratulations, today you have wonderful wonders. Every need in your life tonight is met in Jesus' name. Yeah. Because it is God himself speaking to you. He uses the mic, but is the one talking to you. You see the man, but he is the one talking to you. And tonight, you'll be a partaker of eternal life, of salvation, of forgiveness, of freedom, of healing. Amen. Look at number two there. Number two, closed eyes and hearts rejecting heavenly assistance have you noticed there are people who reject their good they have a preconceived idea they have some blocked mind they have their private agenda they have a bestial return turning back. And because of that, they seal their mind. They close their eyes. They see Jesus healing the sick. They turn the other way. They see Jesus saving a terrible sinner. They turn their eyes away. Deliberately, they reject the salvation of the Lord. They reject the healing of the Lord. 
they reject the deliverance of the Lord. The Lord could have healed them too. But they closed their eyes to the healing. Tonight, you will not close your eyes to your healing. You will not close your eyes to your salvation. Look at Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. It says, For this people's heart is waxed gross. These people are hard, wax gross. And their eyes are dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed. Their eyes they have closed. God gives us eyes to see. He gives us eyelids to close the eyes so that if the wind is blowing and sand is being blown around by that wind, that when evil sin that will spoil our eyes are being blown around, we can close our eyes because of bad things passing on. But the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they turned each upside down. When the wind is blowing, and it will blow sand into their eyes, they open their eyes. When evil is coming, when the causes of blindness are going around, they close their eyes. They open their eyes. But when healing is coming, they close their eyes. When righteousness is coming, they close their eyes. When salvation is coming, they close their eyes. When Jesus the Redeemer is coming, they close their eyes. They turn the use of the eyelids upside down. There are people like that. When Satan is passing by and is going to poison their lives, they open their eyes. When tradition is passing by, and the tradition is going to seal them to eternal doom. They open their eyes. But when salvation is coming, they close their eyes. When healing is coming, they close their eyes. When deliverance is coming, they close their eyes. When the gospel, the good news is coming, they close their eyes, they close their hearts. That, that, that's what Jesus said. He said, they have closed their eyes. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes. And hear with their ears. And should understand with their hearts. And should be converted shall be brought into life eternal shall be brought into the kingdom of God while the message of salvation is going on they close their heart to the message of salvation they are thinking of another thing they are busy on another thing they are busy doing things that will take the message away from them. And so others are getting saved. They're not saved. Others are getting converted. They are not converted. Others are getting renewed. They are not renewed. 
they remain the same as when they came. No life eternal. No life in abundance. No life of heaven. No healing. No deliverance. Is that the fault of the message? Is that the fault of the messenger? Is that the fault of heaven sent address? Is that powerlessness on the world that could turn every life around? No, is their fault. They close their eyes. They say thus far and no more. And so they are not converted. And so they are not healed because they are responsible for closing their eyes. They are responsible for closing their ears. They are responsible for not having the salvation that Christ has brought. Your eyes will not be closed. Hey, did you notice what Jesus said? He didn't say Satan closed their eyes. He said they, they closed their eyes. Are there people that have been hearing the gospel for a long time? And they don't repent? And they don't believe? And they are not changed? And they are not converted? They closed their eyes. But today, as you realize, I want eternal life. I want abundant life. I want the life from heaven. And I want the miracle working power of the Lord to work in my life. Thus far, I've been closing my eyes. Today, tonight, I open my eyes. That salvation will be mine. You'll be a partaker of the salvation of the Lord. And you say tonight, salvation and healing will be mine. You'll have the healing power of the Lord walking in your life in Jesus' name. He says when you open your eyes, the eyes of your mind, the eyes of your understanding, he says, you will have conversion, you will have healing. I come to number three now. Point number three, converted hearts and minds receiving heaven's abundance. How can I explain heaven's abundance to you? I want you to picture it in this way. In heaven, we have abundance of spare parts of your body. If your eyes are dim or blind, we have abundance of sight with God in heaven. If your ears are deaf, we have abundance of spare ears branch new in heaven. If you have, if you have tight tongues, and you are dumb, and you cannot hear, or you cannot speak. We have abundance of perfect speech and vocal cords up there in heaven abundance. Yeah. 
heaven has all things that are missing in your body. Brand new kidney. Brand new livers. Brand new internal parts. Everything you need for your body, for your soul, salvation, peace of mind, regeneration, total clearance and power. We have abundance with God in heaven. And for your courage, for your stamina, you're fearful, you're timid, you fear your juniors, and they say, drink that poison. You say, it will hurt me. He said, I say, drink it. Because of fear, you do what you shouldn't be doing. And those people, they so intimidate you that you poison yourself. They say, join that gang. I don't want to join any gang. The fellow says, I say, join. You know it will destroy your life, but you put your life in their hand because you're afraid of them. And God has abundance of courage and power in heaven that all your fears, everything will vanish away tonight. Anything, anything we lack, anything we do not have, for our spirit, for our soul, for our mind, for our destiny, Anything we lack, there is abundance in heaven. And he says, come, open your heart, open your eyes, embrace the promise of God. And he says, you will have every good thing you lack in life in Jesus' name. Look at Matthew chapter 13, verse 16. But blessed are your eyes for the sea. When your eyes see, when your eyes see your Savior, when your eyes see the one that has brought abundance from heaven. When your eyes see the Savior, when your eyes see the Redeemer, when there is no wall or partition between you and your healer, and you say, I see him, he's my Savior, I accept him, he's my Redeemer, I believe him, I embrace him. Salvation will come to you. Tonight is the night of your salvation. And then your healing. He is your healer. In all these courses we've been having, the GCK were seeing all kinds of sicknesses healed. The moment you open your eyes of faith, I see him, my savior. I see him, my healer. I see him, my deliverer. I see him, the yoke breaker. And you open the eyes of your mind. We're seeing the deaf, those who are born deaf, we're seeing them receiving their hearing. We've seen those who are born blind receiving their sight. 
We've seen the people with fibroid with tumor passing them out. We've seen the drunkards. Those who labor on intoxicating drink. We've seen them set free, delivered, and released. We've seen the barren receiving miracle children. We've seen the lunatic, the people that had insanity of many, many years being delivered and set free. We've seen those having cancer. And as we prayed, the mighty power of God touched them. And the cancer germs and the cancer cells dried up. We've seen people with backbone broken. And the Lord, as they saw, as they saw the Lord, their Savior, their Redeemer, was seen their backbone straightening up and being strong enough to carry them. And today, I said for you today, I said for you today, that same Christ, as you open your closed mind, and you open your closed hearts, and you say, I see him. Tonight is my healer. Tonight is my deliverer. Tonight he will heal and deliver you. And then Jesus will tell you, Blessed are your eyes for the sea. And blessed are your ears for the hear. Conversion has come. Amen. Deliverance has come. Your healing has come. A change of heart. A change of life. A change of personality has come to you tonight. All you have to do is open your eyes and see that the Savior is here. Look at Psalm 51. In Psalm 51, we're looking at verse 12. He said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. And uphold me with thy free spirit. Uh, that's David praying. He confessed his sin. He repented of his sin. He turned away from his sin. And he said, I want salvation. I want the joy of salvation. I want the gladness and the happiness that comes with salvation. I want the victory that comes with salvation. I want the righteousness that comes with salvation. I got it before. I know what it is when I have it. And he said, restore, restore, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. As you come to the Lord tonight, and you say, I see him as my Savior. I see him as my Lord. I see him as the life changer. I see him as the giver of eternal life. And the joy of salvation will come to you tonight. Restore unto me. He didn't say unto us. He as a person. He as an individual. He wanted for himself. 
the new life he wanted for himself the abundant life he wanted for himself the eternal life coming from heaven and he said lord this is my primary important essential desire in prayer restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit look at acts chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 38 the people had had the good news of salvation the good news of the savior that christ is the only savior they open their ears they open their hearts they open their mind and they ask the question they said men and brethren what shall we do they wanted an answer that will bring eternal life unto them and they were ready to receive the answer and they were ready to yield to that answer and to surrender their lives to that answer the peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission for the removal for the forgiveness of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. How did they respond to that? How did they give in to that? How did they embrace that? How did they believe that? Look at verse 41. It says in verse 41, Then they that gladly received the word. They took it as the word coming from God. The word of salvation coming from God. The word of redemption coming from God. They gladly received the word. Embrace the word. They accepted the word. That is the word of God. To give us salvation. To give us eternal life. To give us everlasting life. To give us abundant life. To give us heavenly life. And it says they gladly received the word. And the same day, there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Your own time has now come. Say, my time has come. Time for salvation, it has come. Time for healing, it has come time for deliverance it has come are you ready there look at jeremiah chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 14. here is the prayer they prayed here is the desire they expressed because the word from heaven had come to them and they accepted the word not as the word of a man, but as it is indeed in truth, the word of God. They didn't just hear the word and run off. They heard the word and the saint prayer to the God of heaven. What did they pray for? How did they pray? Not a long, long prayer. Simple, short, 
straightforward. The prayer they prayed. Look at Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 4. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. My eyes are open. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. My heart is open. I receive. I accept. I believe. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. Save me, and I shall be saved. When you accept the word, you accept the promise of the Lord, and you accept that, that your portion in salvation and in healing is available for you right now. Then you indicate I'm the one that needs salvation. Save me, O oh Lord, and I shall be saved. Heal me, O oh Lord, and I shall be healed. Tonight, the good news has come to you. Thank God your hearts are open. Thank God your mind is open. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be healed. You'll be healed tonight. You'll be saved tonight. Your life will turn over for the better tonight in Jesus' name. Heaven is ready for you now. Christ is ready for you now. It's the same yesterday and today and forever. And as you believe him tonight, as you receive him tonight, salvation and eternal life will come to your heart. And as you believe him tonight, as you embrace him tonight, healing and deliverance will come from heaven unto you there. Everybody say amen. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. And now you open the eyes of your mind. You open your heart unto the Lord now. And you say, Lord, I believe. You are the only Savior. And I come to you tonight. And I'm asking, save me and I shall be saved. It will forgive all the sins you have committed in your life. It will set you free from the power of sin in your life. And as you accept the good news, the good news from heaven, your salvation is guaranteed tonight. I said your salvation is guaranteed tonight. You want his forgiveness that he has provided for you by his death on the cross of Calvary. Anywhere you are, you just raise up your hand. I want that forgiveness. 
I want that freedom. I want that eternal life. Wherever you are, raise up that hand. Eternal life. Abundant life. A new life. Salvation. I want forgiveness. I want eternal life. The good news has come to you. It's now yours to respond. If you are raising up your hand, you will stand up. Praise the Lord. God bless you there. Stand up. Open your heart to that salvation of the Lord. And say, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. I want eternal life. I want that abundant life. I want your life eternal, everlasting. Stand up as you raise up your hand. And quietly tell the Lord there as you are standing up that the Lord will forgive. Yes, he'll forgive, but you have to tell him that the Lord will set you free. And that abundant life from heaven will be yours right now. I'm going to pray with you now. And just accept the offer of the Lord for you. Father, a God in heaven, you love everyone. And whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. I bring all these who are raising up their hands or they are standing in I'm bringing them to you right now. Your love and mercy and compassion forgive them in Jesus' name. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Blot all their sins away. Take all the guilt from their heart. And take condemnation away from their hearts. And grant them the faith to believe that Christ and Christ alone is their Savior. Let the joy of salvation come to their heart. And the victory and the righteousness of the saved come to their hearts right now. Write their names in the book of life. Confirm that salvation for everyone. Confirm the joy of salvation in every life. Abundance of life from heaven. Confirm it, O Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Praise the Lord. That's how to have salvation. That's what you prayed for. And that is what you have got. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. They will attend to you now. is very important. Don't sit down until the counselors attend to you. We'll call on our pastor tonight to his moderating for tonight uh, to come and help us during this time of counseling. les conseils rapidement pour s'assurer que tous ceux qui ont levé la maison debout reçoivent une fiche euh, de conseil. Si Regional vous... pastor to assist in the counseling.
for the counselors, let's hurry up. Pastor will come back soon to pray for the sick. If you are sick, don't be discouraged. The man of God will come back and pray for you. Stand still and be in the mood of prayer and commit your heart to Jesus.